Okay, here's a simple sand casting of an anvil using tin. This is a nice low temperature casting operation, so it's a little bit safer than some others. We want to use this uh, little sieve and put our green sand or our oil bonded sand onto our pattern inside the flask. We've got a recipe for how to make this uh, oil bonded sand online, kidsfab.com. But you want the first layer to be screened, so we're going to push it through this sieve. You want the first layer to be nice and fine against your pattern. I should mention we used uh, silicone spray to spray our pattern with as the release. So good dose of silicone spray and let it dry. We found that was a, a really good release. You need something to keep the sand from sticking to the pattern. After you've got the first layer you can just add uh, unsifted sand to fill up the rest of the flask. You do want to pack the sand in really tight. You want it to be, uh, don't worry about pushing it too hard. You want it really mashed up against the pattern. You want it to be solid. Okay, once the sand is up above the top of the flask, you want to take a straight edge and strike the, the flask. You want it to be nice and level so when you flip it over, it'll be resting on the sand. Okay, we're using a split pattern, so we're going to put the other half of the split pattern down, match it up with the, uh, with the other side. If you're using a single-sided pattern, you don't have to worry about that. This is our flask that we made, the cope and the drag. There are instructions on the website on how to make those, but basically you just need a box and you need to be able to line up the two halves of the open box. Now we're going to riddle the sand in the same way that we did on the other side, and we're going to fill up this top half of, the, uh, of our flask. This is the cope of the flask. The drag is the bottom part. Okay, I wasn't paying real close attention when I put this thing together, so I'm going to take a peek in here and see how it's laid out. So when I cut my sprue, I won't hit my pattern. Okay. So what I'm going to use is a drinking straw, and I'm going to poke the drinking straw, kind of twist it down. First I'm going to measure, make sure I get the right depth. I'm just going to twist it and push down into the sand to the depth of where about where the parting line is. It's okay if I go just a little bit beyond the parting line, but I need to go at least that deep. The sprue is where we're going to pour the metal into the mold. Okay, so open the flask up and it's time to get the pattern out. It helps if you give it a little tap here and there before you try to pull it out. When you make your pattern you need to make sure that you leave some way for you to get hold of it to pull it up out of the uh, out of the mold. And there's our there's our pattern pulled out. Nice mold cavity left behind. Okay we're gonna cut a little runner in here for the metal to flow from the sprue into the mold cavity. You might have read that uh, that you need a riser. Sometimes you will need a riser. We're not going to use a riser today. I've cast this pattern several times and haven't had the need for a riser, but uh, a riser is just another cavity that adds more metal back into the mold as it's solidifying. OK, 
Okay, it's time to pour this. Okay, we're going to start melting our tin. You can get tin as uh, lead-free solder available at Lowe's or any hardware store. Okay, we're using a propane torch and a heavy steel ladle to melt the tin. You can see we're using one of our rejects, rejected castings, as stock. When you have molten tin or any molten metal, you don't want to add any kind of wet or dirty metal to the charge. You want to always use clean, dry metal. We want to make sure we get this fully liquid before we begin to pour it. Okay, if you have any junk or slag or dross that's forming on the top of the, uh, the metal, you can just get a little stick and lift that out. It should come right out. Okay, when it's fully liquid, it's time to take it to our mold. We want to make sure this is close by. We don't want to walk around with molten metal. And just start pouring it into the sprue. And don't, don't stop. Just pour, pour quickly until it's completely full overfill it just a little bit. Now just wait about five or ten minutes for it to solidify. Now even after it's cooled for a long time it'll still be hot so make sure you wear gloves when you demold this thing so just lift the the cope off and the casting should go with it. And there it is, there's our casting. Not bad. Hey it actually works mm. for a paperweight. Oh yeah. Hey, that'd be cute. Like many an animals for paperweight. You yep. can sell them. Absolutely. Good work. And we'll just clean that flash off with a file. Mm-hmm. There's our pattern. There's our anvil.